Absorption is a major topic in chemical engineering uh, and the use of separations in mass transfer. Absorption relies on the difference in concentration as means of a driving force to move a species A and absorbate from one phase into another. And in this example, I will discuss how we can uh, take a stream that contains some kind of pollutant or toxin like A and use it, uh, use an absorber to extract A from it uh, with to get a clean stream or a cleaner stream. And what we will do, what happens in our absorber is this dirty stream will be some kind of vapor. And we will bubble the vapor through our liquid absorbent and as these bubbles interface with the uh, liquid, they will um, have concentration profiles that will look like this. So they will have some kind of uh, bulk concentration referred to as PAG. And because there is a little bit of mass transfer resistance, it dips slightly before the interface. And at the interface, we'll have some partial pressure PAI. And at the um, uh, liquid side, we will have some interfacial composition CAI, as well as a bulk concentration uh, CA bulk. And I will define this axis to be Z, uh, and for the sake of simplicity, I will be neglecting curvature in this example. And we can uh, now ask ourselves what kind of mass transfer uh, or flux can we be uh, observing in this uh, system. And so what we'll do is we'll define two regions and we'll note that the flux of A in our Z direction is constant for all Z because uh, mass is conserved and uh, we have no accumulation. And by doing that, what we can define our flux to be in AZ is some local mass transfer coefficient called little kg in our gas phase <laughs> uh, times the bulk concentration of the bulk partial pressure of A in the gas phase minus the interfacial partial pressure of A. And this term must also be equal to a local uh, mass transfer coefficient in our liquid phase called little k sub L and that has a driving force of K -A, uh, C -A -I minus C A bulk. The problem at this point is we do not know what P A I um, or C A I are. They're very difficult to measure because um, we can't very easily uh, extract the solution at the interface um, between these two species. So what we are going to do is we're going to define some fictitious quantities and call them C A star. And P A star. And the reason we define these quantities C A star and P A star is because they will allow us to uh, invoke a global mass transfer coefficient um, and pretend as if, uh, so if we had a liquid global mass transfer coefficient, we could uh, um, evaluate or claim that the driving force would be equivalent to CA star minus CA bulk. And in the case of a global uh, g mass uh, gas mass transfer coefficient, uh, we could say its driving force would be PAG minus PA star. And to actually evaluate what PA star and CA star are, we turn to equilibrium data that we will have um, because it's tabulated or we can evaluate it experimentally. And if we look at equilibrium curves um, for our species A, because we'll know what we're working with or what we want to extract uh, versus uh, its concentration. So if we plotted the composition of A in the gas phase, um, as well as in the uh, liquid phase at various compositions, we would get some kind of equilibrium data that looks like this, uh, 
what we would see is that if we knew what our composition of Ca in the bulk is, if we draw a line up from that and then look to the left, we will find what the uh, fictitious quantity Pa star would be. And then if we knew, uh, well, we would know what the composition or the partial pressure of A is in our gas phase, we can define what the uh, fictitious quantity Ca star would be. And having done that, uh, we can now use our global mass transfer coefficients, big Kg and big Kl. And uh, before I do that, I'd like to uh, say how we might get this equilibrium curve. This equilibrium data will can come from um, if you took Excel and you had some kind of data that told you the partial pressure of A in a liquid, um, I'm sorry, the partial pressure of A in a gas and the partial pressure or the concentration of A in a liquid, um, you would have values. And this is just an XY chart and you could pretty easily graph this to find um, PA star and CA star. And so now getting back to the global mass transfer coefficients, we will define our flux in the Z direction to be big KG times uh, PA G minus PA star as if we assume that instead of a liquid on the outside of our bubble, we had a vapor. Um, and this must also be equal to the local, um, the global uh, mass transfer coefficient in your liquid phase times Ca star minus Ca bulk in your liquid. And uh, what we will do now is divide big Kg by big Kl and use some definitions that we would have in textbooks uh, to figure out what our equilibrium curve would look like if we could neglect curvature. And so doing that, what we would have is big Kg divided by big Kl, Kl, uh, using the definitions that we have just gotten here we will write this as Ca star minus Ca bulk divided by Pa, the uh, partial pressure of A in the bulk of the gas minus Pa star. And from textbooks, this will have a uh, relation of one over m little m kg the local gas phase coefficient and then this little m is the slope if we were to approximate our equilibrium curve as linear this has a slope little m and the numerator is uh, one over and then the local uh, liquid mass transfer coefficient little kl and then divided by 1 over local gas phase mass transfer coefficient plus m over local liquid phase mass transfer coefficient. And with this uh, equation, typically you will be given values of kl and kg. So we can now solve this, solve for m. And once we know what our value of m is, we can now evaluate uh, what our value of big Kg, the global mass transfer coefficient in our gas phase is. Um, this is another textbook uh, relationship you can look up. It tells us that one over big Kg is equal to one over the local gas phase con uh, mass transfer coefficient plus m over the local uh, liquid phase mass transfer coefficient, as well as 1 over the global liquid phase mass transfer coefficient must be equal to 1 over m times 
the local gas transfer mass transfer coefficient plus one over KL and um, once we evaluate these two equations we solve for the global mass transfer coefficients um, once we've done that because we will know what M is KL is KG is uh, we can now find what the interfacial composition is uh, at our uh, in our system by saying that because we know that the flux in our z direction has to be a constant value which would be equivalent to big kg times the total or the um, bulk um, partial pressure of a in your gas phase minus the fictitious quantity pa star that we evaluated this term must also be equal to the local uh, mass transfer gas coefficient times the bulk partial pressure minus the interface um, partial pressure pai and so once we know uh, because we will know every term on the left side of this equation and we know two of the three terms on the right hand side of the equation we can now solve for PAI and uh, we will have and we can also do the same for the uh, interface concentration CAI and we will now know what uh, our interface compositions are and we can fully evaluate what uh, our fluxes. A final note here, uh, sometimes people will talk about the percentage of mass transfer resistance in the uh, gas phase. Uh, what this means is the percent resistance is equal to 1 over little kg divided by 1 over big kg, so the local versus the over the um, overall or global mass transfer coefficient times 100%. And so you can uh, return people the uh, how much resistant is present in your gas phase and how much is present in your liquid phase. And uh, sometimes you'll have cases where uh, you'll have no resistance in your liquid phase and um, this quantity will be equal to 100%. And in that case, you will be able to say if no liquid mass transfer resistance we know therefore that big little kg must be equal to big kg so your um, local mass transfer coefficient must be equivalent to your global mass transfer coefficient in your gas phase so i hope you guys found this useful let me know if you have any questions thanks for watching